Our mass this morning is being offered for Heidi Moulton, M-O-U-L-T-O-N. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And now, my brothers and sisters, let us call to mind our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, let us feel your compassion more readily during these days when, by your gift, we have known it more fully, so that those you have freed from the darkness of error may cling more firmly to the teachings of your truth. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The angel of the Lord spoke to Philip, Get up and head south on the road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza, the desert route. So he got up and set out. Now there was an Ethiopian eunuch, a court official of the Candace, that is the queen of the Ethiopians, in charge of her entire treasury, who had come to Jerusalem to worship and was returning home. Seated in his chariot, he was reading the prophet Isaiah. The spirit said to Philip, go and join up with that chariot. Philip ran up and heard him reading Isaiah the prophet and said, do you understand what you are reading? He replied, How can I unless someone instructs me? So he invited Philip to get in and sit with him. This was the scripture passage he was reading. Like a sheep he was led to the slaughter, and as a lamb before its shears is silent, so he opened not his mouth. In his humiliation, justice was denied him. Who will tell of his posterity? For his life is taken from the earth. Then the eunuch said to Philip in reply, I beg you, about whom is the prophet saying this? About himself or about someone else? Then Philip opened his mouth, and beginning with this scripture passage, he proclaimed Jesus to him. As they traveled along the road, they came to some water, and the eunuch said, Look, there is water. What is to prevent my being baptized? Then he ordered the chariot to stop, and Philip and the eunuch both went down into the water and he baptized him. And when they came out of the water, the spirit of the Lord snatched Philip away, and the eunuch saw him no more, but continued on his way rejoicing. Philip came to Azotus and went about proclaiming the good news to all the towns until he reached Caesarea. The word of the Lord. <clears throat> Let all the earth cry out to God with joy. Let all the earth cry out to God with joy. Bless our God, you peoples. Loudly sound his praise. He has given life to our souls 
and has not let our feet slip. Let all the earth cry out to God with joy. Hear now, all you who fear God, while I declare what he has done for me. When I appeal to him in words, praise was on the tip of my tongue. Let all the earth cry out to God with joy. Blessed be God, who refused me not, who refused me not my prayer for his kindness. Let all the earth cry out to God with joy. I am the living bread that came down from heaven, says the Lord. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to the crowds, No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draw him, and I will raise him on the last day. It is written in the prophets, They shall all be taught by God. Everyone who listens to my Father and learns from him comes to me. Not that anyone has seen the Father, except the one who is from God. He has seen the Father. Amen, amen, I say to you. Whoever believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate the manna in the desert, but they died. This is the bread that comes down from heaven, so that one may eat it and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh for the life of the world. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, the colorful story of Philip and the Ethiopian official that we heard in the first reading today from Acts is an example of how the good news began to be spread to the ends of the known earth from Jerusalem. The Ethiopian official was on his way back to what was then a very remote Ethiopia. This story today is closely related to the story of the disciples on the road to Emmaus, in Luke chapter 24. There's the same apparently chance meeting on a journey, the same instruction about Christ from the words of Scripture, and the same conclusion with a sacrament. In the Emmaus story, the risen Christ is himself the main figure directly at work. In the story of Philip that we heard this morning, it's the Holy Spirit who's guiding things just slightly in the background. In the Emmaus story, the sacrament that it concludes with is the Eucharist. In the story of Philip, the sacrament that concludes the passage is baptism. At the end of each of the stories, the teacher, Jesus in one case, and the apostle Philip in today's story mysteriously disappear. There are so many different parallels. The Ethiopian official was reading a passage 
from Isaiah chapter 53, the fourth song of the suffering servant of the Lord, when he and Philip join up. It plays a central part in the passion narrative, that passage from Isaiah 53, explaining the silence of Jesus as he stands before his accusers when he's interrogated by the high priest and by Pilate. There, his silence is seen as a surprise and as a wonderment, if you will, and as a sign of weakness by all. But it's just one more instance of an aspect of Jesus' life that can only be understood against the backdrop and within the context of the Old Testament. As has frequently been said by the fathers of the church, everything in the Old Testament points to and is fulfilled by Jesus Christ. The Ethiopian official is referred to as a eunuch in the reading, and this status doesn't seem to be important at all for the preaching of the gospel or for his baptism by Philip. However, one little wrinkle here, and there may well be a lesson here for us. In Judaism, a eunuch could not be considered as a member of the chosen people. So here we have Philip removing or simply overlooking a Jewish limitation and pretty boldly acting as though eunuchs are not to be excluded from Christianity. Perhaps this is a good reminder for us today that no one is excluded from Christ's mercy and everyone who seeks the Lord with sincerity of heart is to be welcomed as a member of the body of Christ. And now let us stand and present our prayers to the Lord for our needs and for the needs of all the world. Our response will be, God of new life, hear our prayer. God of new life, hear our prayer. For all those who teach the faith, may they find the patience and wisdom to speak in ways their students will hear. We pray. God of new life, hear our prayer. For those who have questions about their faith, may they be encouraged to ask them. We pray. God of new life, hear our prayer. For the sick and suffering here and throughout the world, may they find comfort in their strength of the Lord. We pray. God of new life, hear our prayer. For those who have died, may they rejoice in the Lord who has triumphed over sin and death. We pray. God of new life, hear our prayer. For our personal and unspoken intention that we hold deep in our hearts. We pray. God of new life, hear our hear prayer. prayer. Almighty God and Father, we ask you to hear our prayers, which we presented to you this morning with confidence and trust in your compassion and your mercy. We pray, as always, in the name of Jesus the Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. 
fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O God, who by the wonderful exchange effected in this sacrifice have made us partakers of the one supreme Godhead, grant, we pray, that as we have come to know your truth, we may make it ours by a worthy way of life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Amen. The Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. Through him the children of light rise to eternal life, and the halls of the heavenly kingdom are thrown open to the faithful, for his death is our ransom from death, and in his rising the life of all has risen. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people, exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Eric, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. 
Now, at our Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us now offer each other a sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the <clears throat> Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. St. Michael, the archangel, protect us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Amen.